the derivative of the exponential function f of x equals e to the x is the function itself f prime of x is equal to e to the x. The natural logarithm is the inverse of the exponential function. So we could write ln, let's use y for the input, is the inverse, which we denote by f to the negative 1, of f. Can we use this fact to figure out what the derivative of the natural logarithm should be? Well, let's think about the derivative of the exponential function, df dx. One way to think of the derivative is that it's the slope. So we could write it as the change in f. Let's call it the output. Change in the output of f over the change in the input. Here's a function machine diagram that could symbolize f. So the input to the function machine would be x. And if we write y equals f of x equals e to the x, then this output here would be y. So we might write the derivative as the change in y over the change in x. And this derivative, df dx, the derivative of the exponential function, is e to the x. Now let's try to do the same thing for the natural logarithm. If this function machine f represents e to the x, then if we flip the function machine over and run it backward, we get f inverse, where the input is now y and the output is x. Running the function machine backwards undoes what the original function machine did. And this backward function is the natural logarithm. That's why we used y over here. Not that we had to use y, but it helps this diagram make more sense. So we can denote the sphere by y and we can denote the tetrahedron by x. So if y equals f of x equals e to the x, then x equals f inverse of y, which is ln of y. Let's represent the derivative of f inverse in the same way that we represented the derivative of f. So d f inverse dy will equal the change in the output of f inverse over the change in the input of f inverse. Well, the output of f inverse is this x, so this tetrahedron. That's the input to f. And the input to f inverse is the output to f. So the ratio of change in output of f inverse to change in input to f inverse is the same thing as the ratio of the change in the input to f over the change in the output of f. Or we might write this as the change in x over the change in y. Well, this is just the reciprocal of the derivative of f. And what is the derivative of f? It's e to the x. So the derivative of f inverse, i.e. the derivative of the natural logarithm, should be 1 over e to the x. But that doesn't quite make sense because this x represents the output of the natural logarithm. We need to write the derivative of the natural logarithm in terms of its input y. But that's not so hard because we know that e to the x is the same thing as y. So 1 over e to the x is 1 over y. And that is the derivative of the natural logarithm. df inverse dy, i.e. the derivative of the natural logarithm, which we can write as d dy of ln of y, is equal to 1 over y. Of course, it didn't matter that I used the letter y here. I could have used the letter z or x or anything. So, for example, the derivative of ln of z is 1 over z.